welcome. Ah, uh, all right. I'll start it right now. Um, let me just make sure. It's... I never know when to look, where to look. You look and wherever look... you want. <laughs> I'm so excited to be talking to you. Leslie Jordan, you are a delight. Well, thank you. And as, as are you. Look, we're just two Southern Bells just doing our thing. With sweet mamas. <laughs> I know. I love the videos that you post. Uh, you were in Chattanooga at the beginning of this whole thing, weren't you? I sure was. I am. I saw it coming. I really? was there for family reasons. And I mm -hmm. said to my mother, I said, they're going to make us stay home. She said, oh, they're not. Yeah. I, I said, they are, mama. They're going to make everybody stay home. Yeah. And she said, well, and so I said, I'm going to stay here because I don't want to stay in my apartment in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. Well, then I figured when it really happened, I thought I can't stay here. I have identical twin sisters. <laughs> yeah. I know you're a triplet. pretty too much younger than me. It's like something out of Tennessee Williams. It's just <laughs> mama and them, mom and the twins. <laughs> they live together. Oh, they do They live together. You know, they dated boys in high school and, and then they just, I don't know that neither of them had married. One of them was engaged one time, but it's just the two of them, and they're the happiest human beings I know. Oh, my god! They just wake up, you know, just, good morning. How you doing? I go, yeah. shut up. Uh, <laughs> You're the ordinary one. <laughs> yes. Well, it sounds Mama, like. I'm born with a nasty disposition. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> Which is what's it, made you so successful. Maybe that's it. But, um, yeah, I was home with them, and, and uh, I get back there quite a bit. That's the greatest thing I ever did as an adult. Was mm -hmm. I was able to buy them the prettiest place. Oh. It looks like Laura Ashley threw a. <laughs> it's just oh, it's so precious. It's just precious. Oh my God, you're so sweet. So you stay there with them when you go home? No, I don't. Oh really? I, I have a pl I have a, a a loft thing upstairs. It's just better mm -hmm. for me to stay at a. I stayed out the Reed House, this <laughs> historical hotel in Chattanooga. Yeah. And then I can go out there and, and uh, see them when I want. And I'm not stuck and I come and I go. Yeah. It's just better. I figured that out a long time ago. Oh, I'm it's the same better. way. I'm from North Carolina. You know, we're, we're neighbors. Uh, and I love to go visit home, but I, I have to do it in doses. <laughs> just, <laughs> and you know when it's time to go. Oh, for I, it, sure. It'll literally be like mother will say, well, when are you going? I said, well, I'm supposed to say about another week but i think i'm gonna leave tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> you just it's know time. it's time time for me to go home yeah my mom will my mom will be like why aren't you staying longer and i'm like i just know what the limit is <laughs> and and when Look she what was, i have just for you oh sweet tea sweet tea in a jar i love it are you back in la yeah i sure am i had to come back um I just had a big job that paid me so much money. It was the craziest thing. Whoa. The, uh, my manager called and said, do you, have you heard of Quibi? <laughs> I said, I don't know. What do you, I don't even know what you're saying. Yeah. He said, it's an app that, um, Meg Whitman and Jeffrey Katzenberg started, but they're mm -hmm. doing short format. And they had this idea to do a, 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 a game show. I said, Oh no, no honey. I don't want to. I don't want to do that. Yeah. He said, Leslie, they sold it to Amazon. It's network money. Ooh, I said, yeah. what do you mean network money? Like a half a million. Leslie. I said, what, what are you talking about? Yeah. He said, they're willing to pay me half a million. <laughs> you know, that's life changing. That's like, I mean, people think, you know, I've made a lot of money. I hadn't. Even on yeah. Will and Grace, I just got scale, I think. I don't get, I didn't get much more. Well, that's what people don't, I think, uh, they just assume if you're on television that you're, that you're rich. rich. And they don't realize if you're a guest star, even if you're recurring, you're only making, you know, a little bit of money. And then you have managers, agents. And all of them, everybody with their hand. But I went, I showed up. It was adorable. It's seven minutes. It's called squeaky clean yeah welcome to squeaky clean hi i'm leslie jordan where three competitive uh obsessive cleaners battle it out in two dirt filled rooms <laughs> and we dirty up these two rooms and send them in there and then judge them on creativity yeah of uh, organization and stuff 
it was kind of precious. So oh, I'm not sure it. when that comes out, but I had to come back out for that. Well, I thought, well, yeah. I'm just going to stay because we start calling me Cat, and I'm going to get you on that program. Wait, what's that one? Do you know Call Me Cat? You have got to be on this program. I don't know it's, it. It's Mayim Bialik. Mm -hmm. I love her. And she's producing it with yeah. Jim Parsons, her dear friend. You know, oh, the two yeah. of them. Mm -hmm. Which I, I've not met him yet, but um, and, and she, he's not in it. He's producing it. Jim's yeah. producing it. But it takes place in Louisville, Kentucky. It's Southern. Yeah. And listen, yeah. Swoosie Kurtz plays the mother and she mm -hmm. just is Southern and fancy. She goes to the races and yeah. wears big hats and she's a little bit ashamed of her homely daughter that's 38 <laughs> years old and not married. Who can't, who said that said, part? Got, that's my, um, she goes, you got to get married. <laughs> you need to get married, Cat. Catherine, she calls her and, yeah. and Mayim tells her, call me Cat. She goes, I don't know Cat. I didn't get birth to a cat. Catherine <laughs> and it's real southern the two of them and oh, I just man. scream we've done we've had to do three zoom read-throughs we're yeah. into episode three we don't start shooting till October 13th wow but Shine Jackson's on it I love adorable him. Yeah. adorable he's Julian good. Gant who is so funny he's uh that real funny black guy that talks to the big a uh, big thing of cheese yeah it says cheese doesn't have a mouth on you know on the <laughs> he gets me so tickled he's so funny well if they need and, a chubby uh, anyway, we, and then kyla need... pratt little oh, disney darling adorable yeah. adorable if they, if they need a, a chubby southern lesbian tell them to call me i'm gonna tell them i thought well i'm gonna i've made a whole list of people i won't fit on that program i know well because there's only uh you know so many of us true southerners in right. los angeles and I, it's I such know. a treat when we get to do actual southern projects I just, I, it drives me crazy when someone tries to do a Southern accent and doesn't do it right. They they try to talk like Scarlett O'Hara. They say, my mother, my father. Like, <laughs> I don't, maybe way down in South Georgia, they talk like that. I don't know anybody talks like that. Uh, yeah, I know. It's always that, that Savannah type accent. I do declare. And uh -huh. you're like, that's, that's not it. That's not it. Well, I'm so happy for you. I mean, you the 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 pandemic has i mean you've been doing stuff for you decades, and me both we've done this, so well <laughs> this pandemic i mean you're i just because i was always watching your instagram it made me laugh so much and then all of a sudden i just see these you're it's up one million two million followers three million four five million i mean it's like five million were you just like what is happening it started when i was in chattanooga i was I rented that b and I rented a bed and breakfast near mama's and I'd sit there and, and start just think of funny things. Mm -hmm. And I figured out today I have done 161 days Wow! with two posts a day. Mm -hmm. I've had friends of mine come over and say, let's see, they pay television writers 250,000 a year to come up with that kind of content Yeah, with not even half that content. Mm -hmm. I said, well, I just, they said, do you have help? I said, nobody helps me. I just do it myself. I think of funny stuff. <laughs> and some of it bombs, some of it works. But my friend called me when I was in Chattanooga and he said, honey, of course he said, girl, girl, you've gone, girl, <laughs> you've gone viral. And I yep. said, oh no, honey, I'm fine. I don't have COVID. I'm, he said, no, you've gone viral on the internet. He said, you've got a million followers. And I had had about 80,000. That was my, where I yeah. was. Uh, mm -hmm. And I only got that many because Megan Mullally mm -hmm. reposted something. And with all her millions, yeah. it jumped me up. And I couldn't believe it. I said, I'm at 80,000 followers. Mm -hmm. And then it just started climbing. I've got about five point three now. <laughs> it's crazy. And, I mean, it, but it's, but it, but it's makes sense to me because I was watching your videos when long before the 80,000 and I, I'm seeing videos of yours from back then people reposting now and or I'll repost them yeah I'm re I, on there some days I get up my thing I just I don't have anything today oh, listen and I so have... I'll dig through and find something in fact um I thought 
I think it was it last night I posted, there was a funny video where, um, oh no, I'm going to post it. I posted it a long time ago about my spiritual advisor, which is mm -hmm. actually my AA sponsor. I say yeah. spiritual advisor. We have to, I mean, I've been a recovery I've mm -hmm. 22 years, but oh, you wow. have, you know, somebody that you go to Yeah. and Don Norman. And I used to always tell him when I first got so life is just not fair, Don. Mm -hmm. It's just not fair. And he said, honey, if life was fair, you'd be doing 10 to 20. If life was wow. fair, yeah. all day, carrying <laughs> on back when we drank, <laughs> back in the day, running all over West Hollywood. And, I was reading about some of that trouble you got into. Uh, uh, I was like, what was Leslie thinking? You, you, two drinks and you'd be lit. I Two drinks and it was over. <laughs> and I never could. I never equated the two that it was my drinking that caused me to get in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> but I was in trouble all the time. You were just like, oh, this is such bad luck that this cop happened all to be here. All this stuff is happening to me, and I don't know why, because life is not fair. <laughs> but I had, I, at one point, I'm not making this up, on my answer machine, when it said, hey, it's Leslie, I'm so sorry. That was on my answer <laughs> Because I knew whatever you were talking about. I had done something awful and I had that on. I said, listen, I'm so sorry. I promise. You're just I like, promise I'm trying to do better. You're like, this is a broad message for everyone. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. What do you, I mean, were you getting it? Were you drinking like that in the, uh, back in Tennessee too? Or was that something that started when you moved out to Los Well, you know, I got out of Tennessee pretty fast. I went to Atlanta when I was 19 and then I went back up and tried to go to school in Knoxville, mm -hmm. but I was gone. You know, I was gone out of, out of Tennessee by the time. Well, I'd come, you know how you have to go back home for a little while. Yeah. <laughs> back in the day. <laughs> I'd run out of money or uh -huh. something and I'd come back. And then my stepfather got where he wouldn't let me. He really? said, no, mm -mm, you can't come back. Mm -hmm. I said, where am I going to go? <laughs> and my mother's like, where's he going to go? Yeah. <laughs> He said, no, he can't come back here. So, you know, I am, um, most of my drinking and drugging was here. I was mm -hmm. here by 82, so yeah. 1982. And I'm telling you back in the day, I'm writing a book about it right now. I can't talk about it. Right. I've got all these projects I can't talk about because they know. haven't announced them yet, but I'm going to write a book about all that yeah. tearing on. I bet. Oh. Well, that was part of the culture too. I mean, that just was the, the time of what was happening. Well, it also had to do back then there were no, there wasn't AIDS. Mm -hmm. So gay boys were just crazy. I yeah. mean, we just slept with anything, anybody, mm -hmm. you know, Yeah. you just go to the bar and get a trick. That's what we'd say. Yeah. I'm going I'm to go to the bar and get a trick. And then you <laughs> sometimes come back and get enough. <laughs> <laughs> Two or three in one night. My friend, he was like, weren't you just here? Didn't yeah. you live with that boy? I said, he said, back, <laughs> that was a small trick. Now I need another one. <laughs> what made you decide to to get sober? Uh, my unfortunate incarceration. Oh. <laughs> was that when you shared a cell with Robert Downey Jr.? Yes. <laughs> yes. That, that I got th three. I'm so ashamed of it, but I got three DUIs. Mm -hmm. Three. Yeah. I just couldn't stop. And so by the time you get your three, my friend said to me, my all my friends said, Leslie, you're going to do jail time. I said, they can't put me in jail. I'm on Pacific Blue. I'm on a TV show. <laughs> I'm doing this TV show with Mario Lopez. He probably doesn't even remember me. I had such a tiny part. It was just a guest part. Mm -hmm. I said, they can't put me in jail. I got to work. Yeah. And, uh, and he, they said, he, they said, no, you're going to go to jail. And that, and then I hired a lawyer and paid him $4,000. And uh, the lawyer said, uh, you're not going to do any jail time. I said, oh, good. That judge said, 120 days. Oh, I looked man. over. That, that lawyer's waving like I was leaving on a cruise. <laughs> Cashing that check. <laughs> but I, um, I knew then, I knew, I thought the jig is up. Mm -hmm. The jig is up. Yeah. And um, I, uh, I tell people, you want to get sober, spend, a, spend 12 days in the uh, the the jailhouse down there in uh downtown los angeles the yeah. city jail oh my lord well, i mean i laugh about it now but it was just the work it's like the playground 
they tease you. They're awful. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. It's just awful. Yeah. But you know, it ultimately it led to you cleaning up and it I, did. I imagine and that, that changed and your that's, life. I'm most proud of that because the first five years were rough. People say, would say to me, now, Lisa, you know what? You're going to be able to eventually go out to bars and be around people that drink. It's not going to bother. Well, that's bull. I really? don't want to go to a bar. I don't go to gay bars, but it has nothing to do with that. I want to drink. I just don't want to be around people. Right. You know, the minute, and it has nothing to do with me being somewhat of a celebrity. Either. It's where they get to where they say, listen, you know how much I appreciate you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> Honey, I appreciate you too. No, no, really. Yeah. I appreciate you so much. <laughs> I just can't stand people, even when they're two glasses of wine in and get I chatty. know. It I just can't. I just want to slap them. <laughs> so you don't even you don't even go to the gay bars. I don't. I haven't yeah. been to a gay bar in a hundred years. And and you're you would be all the rage at the gay bar too. I mean, willing. And Grace that is such do a... you know when I got to Hollywood, that was my secret dream. I thought I want to be able to walk into rage. And have everybody just going, yeah. And I just want to walk through it. I could, honey. I would rather get beat with a stick than do that. <laughs> oh, I hear you. I don't hang out at. Uh, I mean, I have to go to bars for stand up and stuff. Uh, I don't hang out at them very much for fun. I'm I'm an old lady now. <laughs> Well, was it, I mean, I'm always curious about, you know, other Southerners who've come before me. I mean, was it a hard uh, transition getting work, being a Southerner? Did you feel like you needed to change or your voice or any of that stuff? They wanted, when I first got here, there was a couple of casting directors that sat me down and said, you've got to lose the accent. You're so limited already mm -hmm. because you're such a character that we think that that limits you further. And I tried. Yeah. Oh my God. And people, and then I'd call mother. She'd say, why are you talking like that? <laughs> yeah. And I would try to enunciate. And they told me one time, put a pencil. You have to put a pencil. I took all this. And then the day I decided, and I had this talk with uh, Wendy Williams mm -hmm. uh, when I got to be on her show a long, long time ago. She told me, she said, you know, they told me a long time ago um, that I, when I was in radio, you're just too big, Wendy. You're too big for TV. Mm -hmm. You're just, there's just too much of you with oh, that hair and those boobs. And you just, you know, and she thought I knew what I wanted. I wanted a jewel box studio and I wanted to just be able to be myself. And when they finally let me do that, this is what happened. I said, girl, you are preaching to the choir. Yeah. When they finally just let me be this marketable package, which is Southern and whatever it comes with it. I mean, I've had some hilarious things. I was a Ferengi one time on Star Trek <laughs> and they put me eight hours. They put rubber pieces and fake teeth and ghost spec contact lenses. And I walked and no one had, asked me could I drop my southern right they just hired me and I walked in and started delivering my lines in dead silence and that main old director come over he said this is not deep south nine. Oh my this god is, can you get we got to get that frangie above the mason dixon <laughs> and and then they hired a linguist and she's so hateful she said finally she said Mr. Jordan feather does not have four syllables and I said feather <laughs> Say that's like my character. That's like my character Brenda. She says, Tim. <laughs> I love Brenda so much. Oh, we gotta what add syllables to all those words. <laughs> yeah. I remember I did a VO. I went to a general meeting for a voiceover person <laughs> when I first moved out here and she was like, Can you know, had me do different voices? She goes, Okay, now do a grandma and I do a grandma. She goes, okay, can you do a not Southern grandma? I said, no, I can't. <laughs> but you That's why I think I don't, I have the number one voiceover agent in the city. Mm -hmm. He put 80 people on cartoons last year, but he, I think it's because two things that I, that, that I think with voiceover. Number one, I think I sound, I've got that other accent, which we're not talking Southern, that gay. I just sound gay. You know what I mean? 
you, and, and I'm, you are a woman. I sound like a woman for some reason. When you hear me on the phone, they'll go, ma'am, ma'am, especially when I'm mad. I'm not a ma'am. I'm a sir. I'm a gay sir, but I'm a sir. I'm a gay sir. <laughs> I get called I get called sir all the time because my voice is kind of deeper. So and that one guy I did it to me the other day and he goes, "What can I do for you, sir?" And he's then he saw me. He's like, "I'm I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry." I'm like, I, if I had a nickel for every time. Well, I love when they when you order at the drive through. I'd like a this or that, and then they say, "Okay, ma'am, that'll be." And then you pull up, and they're like. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> well, did you have, well, you know, obviously it took the industry finally accepting you for who you are. Did you have anyone vouching for you? Like, what do you think was the big sort of turning point for you? What happened was I was doing um, commercials mainly. That's mm -hmm. all I did. I mean, I was, I was the PIP printing guy. I was the elevator operator. I mean, this is in the eighties. Uh, I was like Flo I was, uh, on, on Progressive. I was mm -hmm. so well known for my commercials. And then I started working a little bit in television, but I didn't have really good representation. But I got hired for Murphy Brown. Yeah. The seventh episode of the pilot season. It wasn't a big hit yet, but I had a tiny little part in uh, Diane English uh, that created it. Uh, he came to me and said, listen, we love this character and mm -hmm. we've given each of our regulars their episode. We're going to give you an episode. Wow. And so it was called Kyle and it was so cute. Candace Bergen had gotten me out of prison for a crime I didn't commit. Mm -hmm. And I'd been in prison for 15 years. So I was still wearing platform shoes and macrame belts and <laughs> Southern, I mean, uh, uh, hippie pants. Yeah. And I didn't have anywhere to go, so I'd just show up every day. Hi, how y'all doing? And they'd go, well, we're doing real groovy. How are you? And anyway, it was just amazing. And the next day after that aired, my agent at the time called and said, Leslie, I've never had this happen. I've, I've heard of like a, a, a break or a yeah. overnight success. He said, Steven Spielberg's people called. They saw it. They want to meet with you. Uh, Burt Reynolds wants to put you in a series with his wife, Lonnie Anderson. <laughs> Wow. Huey Herman, Paul Rubens, uh, and I came through and I went and I was on the Pee Wee Playhouse for a while. Mm -hmm. um, it was just amazing. And then I started working. Yeah. And I hadn't stopped. That's amazing. So it really yeah. was just like a break. Yeah. But I mean, I've had years where it was, you know what I mean? Slow. Mm -hmm. Honey, I, we used to have to line up down there at the unemployment office. It's now the youth center for the, it was at McCadden and Santa Monica Boulevard. Mm -hmm. And you had to physically go there to get your unemployment check. Yeah. And if you were in the Screen Actors Guild, they were really good about letting you get your check if you didn't work that way. Mm -hmm. And then you, I'd stand there and you, you saw everybody. You saw movie stars standing there in line, wait, wait to get that check. Oh, really? You know. Wow. Yeah. So, so how many, how many years have you, have you been in the business? Do you know at this point how, how long that's been? Uh, almost 40. Dang. But I mean, it's such a testament to your perseverance and hard work. Cause like I said, I mean, I think people see, you know, like someone see you from that Murphy Brown show. Oh, he's made it, but there's always hills and valleys to it. Uh, and I'll go through long periods and every job I have, I think, well, this is it. They're not going to hire my old CCF ever again. <laughs> and I'm, I've never been fired. Yeah. I've never, Ever. I talk, I talk to actors all the time where they had to let me go and I think I would die. Yeah. I would die. Yeah. If they had let me go for a subject, but I've always, you know, plus because I do have a degree in theater, I know how to work mm -hmm. and I'm not the kind of actor. I'll, I'll tell you a real quick story and then we can wrap it up. Cause mm -hmm. I know I'm, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> too long, no, but, you're t I love talking um, to you. I just appreciate it. I had you. this job the first job after I got sober mm -hmm. and I called my dear sponsor and I said, listen, I'm having problems. Cause I, I don't know how to measure my success in this industry. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, there's people like Jim Carrey making 20 million a picture and 75% of the screen actors field are not even making enough for their insurance. I know. So where am I? Mm -hmm. 
he said, what you need to do is you just need to show up and be of loving service. And I said, oh, oh, that sounds like new age. What? Namaste. Yes, I'm yeah. here to be of loving <laughs> service. What do you mean? Yeah. He said, Leslie, you, what you want to do is you want to be of service to the producers. So you're on time. Mm-hmm. You know your lines. You don't make waves. You need to be of service to the director. It's his vision. Yeah. It's, you know, you're there to bring to the table, but it is his vision. You're of a, a service to the fellow actors, which means you don't steal the scene. Yeah. You, and I tried that for a full week. I just showed up to be a worker among workers. Mm-hmm. And I was there to bring this. And I'm telling you, it changed the trajectory of my career. Wow. I started working with, see, directors now use me. Mm-hmm. Uh, writers write me. You know, David Kelly writes me in everything. Um, uh, everybody, you know, people write for me, Linda Bloodworth Thomas, and people know that yeah. I'll show up. I'm, 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 a, I'm good at what I do, and I don't, you know, try to make waves. And I think that's the secret right there yeah. is that people say, and it's a business, show business. Business is the most important word. Yeah. And people forget that, especially the ones coming up. They uh-huh. think, they think oh. they're just going to get these, and they think it's going to be um, red carpets. I've been on one red, I, 40 years, I've been on one red carpet, and I hated it. It was for the hell. Yeah. And I've never been, I thought this is a panic attack waiting to happen. I can't do this. I yeah. can't do red carpets. I follow, I don't know why. It makes me too nervous. Well, they're very but, awkward, uh, you know? Like, people are talking to you, and you don't really know what uh, to say. You know I mean, what it's, to say. you're, you're, <laughs> you're getting all this uh success i mean you've been working for so long like you said all these really amazing people write for you and have for years so your success is not new just this new exposure is uh, probably perfect in a pandemic you don't have to it go to is. Red i don't have to go anywhere i don't have to do anything <laughs> the last time i did try one of the red carpet this is the craziest story it was for a huge L- lgbtq lmnop event <laughs> And they said, uh, the publicist had me and said, wait, 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 honey. Um, uh, Marsha Cross is going to go. Uh, you know, I said, okay. Uh-huh. So then, then they'd wait. They said, okay, now you go. Well, <laughs> I walked out and the place just went apeshit. Cameras, but I thought, oh, and I'm going like this. And one of the cameramen said, move. Liza Minnelli had walked in behind me and they're not going to stop. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going like this. And they go, move. move. I just walked away and I thought, I'm not going to do that ever again. It's like high school. Oh, That's my gosh. awful. Uh, that well, the now, popular people are going to get all the attention and they're used to that. Well, when we get out of quarantine and you go to a red carpet, they're going to be yelling at other people to move for you. So you just wait. <laughs> Well, I know you got to go and because you're so busy. I'm so appreciative that you made this. Well, this time. was fun. Uh, and I love you so much. I'm such a fan. And I can't I, wait for us to work together. It'd be uh, hilarious. Can you imagine? The, well, that's the, people kept writing me being like, you got to have Leslie Jordan on. You two like need to be in a sitcom <laughs> together. You need to work together. And I'm like, I know. I would love that. So I, I feel like it's just a matter of time before uh, we get to do, do something. Too. And tell uh, your sweet mama I said hello. I sure will. You tell your mama hello. And <laughs> okay, uh, honey. My uh, love my, you, and I'll I'll talk to you soon. All right, Leslie. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Bye.